every young rugby player that calls the Rainbow Nation home dreams of one day playing for their country. But the journey that leads to the green and gold is an arduous one, filled with many obstacles. Behind every wearer of the Springbok badge lies a tale of courage, commitment and sacrifice. These are the men that walked the road less traveled. Now or never. I think my, my message is, is pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't matter what circumstances you come from, it doesn't matter what, uh, what people say. If you got a, a dream and a fire to do something, and if you want to become a box, nothing can stop you. And Farida Priya has left the field, and he's been replaced to thunderous applause by Rudy Page. What a moment for Rudy Page of the Bulls. Born in Riversdale, he's been the epitome of professionalism and teamwork during this campaign so far. Never a complaining moment, just waiting for this opportunity. Rudy Page's journey to becoming Springbok number 869 has been walked with single-mindedness and determination. He chased his dream of donning the green and gold from his youth in Heidelberg to the day he made his Springbok debut at Wembley during the 2015 Rugby World Cup. I was born in a town called Riversdale, but I, was, I didn't, never grew up there. The only reason I was born is because the town that I grew up in Heidelberg didn't have a hospital. Rudy was um, a very energetic boy. He grew up with us, with his family, also a sports family, rugby, tennis, cricket, you name it. There's a lot to do, uh, weird enough. Uh, I think from playing touches in the street to playing cricket, uh, to running around, um, playing with soccer balls. I think that was basically my, as a child, what, what I loved for is, is waiting for my friends once we're done with school to get a, either if you, if you didn't have a, a rugby ball, you just take a, a, plastic, a plastic bag and get a, a lot of grass and mold it like a rugby ball and then you would play touches for, for about three hours until your mother come take you by the ears to, to get into the house to go take a shower. Sport played a big part in Rudy's life from an early age. I was playing rugby till provincial level. Played for South Western Districts. My wife was playing netball, also club, but also for the, for the province, South Western District province. So he, he grew up in, in our family at home and uh, always practiced with us. During the day, in the evening, he's always there. My father played, played rugby, so for me, rugby was the only thing I knew when I grew up. I grew up in a, in a small town, like you see it. Uh, there was the only sport being played in the town. My brother played rugby, my, my cousins played rugby. So it was the only thing I knew. And it, I still remember at that time, you loved for, I, at that time it was still open time. So that was, you couldn't wait for open time for the five o'clock Curry Cup game to be to be played on TV, so that was basically my, my, my weekends. And uh, some other sport that I really enjoyed was cricket. But I played Provincial under 13 cricket, and I played Provincial under 15. And, I, and then after under 15, I decided to take rugby a bit more serious. Under 12 and under 13, I played fly-off until my dad one day had, a, had an unfortunate sit down with me and told me, listen, your son, I know you like to enjoy kicking a ball, but I don't think with your length and your size that you're going to make it at fly-off. So he told me that basically if I want to make it or at least enjoy my rugby, that I'm going to have to move to, to scrum up. Paige didn't have to look far for inspiration. I, th I still remember Ricky January making his Springbok debut. I think that was the first time. Obviously the, back then it was a dream, more dream than a reality. So for me, when, when Ricky made his, his Springbok debut, that, that's when the lights went on in my head. Like, Yes, this is a guy that comes from Oakfield, a small town, the same as I grew up, and he made it to the top, so, so what is, what, what, why can't you make it? Dad obviously has, had the, has had the biggest influence from a point of view that I grew up watching him play for the club. Uh, he played a little bit for SWD, and he was obviously a teacher playing for the college, so 
I grew up with, uh, but the, I would say another guy that my dad molded me into watching a lot of rugby was George Cregan. So that was obviously one guy that I watched a lot when I was younger, watching on a Friday morning, watching the Brumbies play, studying how he went about his business. A guy like Fauri de Priya, his decision making I think is probably, probably the best in the world. Uh, he probably picks the, the right guy at the right pass at the right time, more often than not. Uh, so that for me was just something that is the benchmark for a scrum off in South Africa. Despite thriving in Heidelberg, the Page family took the opportunity to relocate to Oudsworen. I stayed in, in Heidelberg for about 12 years, and then my dad was originally a teacher back then. Then he, he left the, the teaching for, to become a priest. So we moved from, from Heidelberg to Oudsworen because that was the church that he was deployed to and that he had to go work at. So at the age of 12 years, we moved from my whole family to, to go live in Oudsworen. Uh, I was very, very lucky and fortunate that uh, Otuniko High School scouted me playing under 13 Craven Week for SWD. And then I got a, a bursary from them to go and obviously play rugby and cricket at Otuniko. He always told his aunts when he was a little boy, he told them uh, that he is going to be a professional rugby player one day. And that some of the schools will ask him to come play for them. He told it when he, I think it was, he was 10, 11 years. I think it's an excellent school. It's a school that taught me a lot about life and rugby. and obviously gave me the opportunity to compete against a lot of the bigger schools, which was probably the only school that had that uh, advantage in SVDS. So I think from that point of view, I was very lucky to be at Otteni quite a young age. Being exposed to a higher standard of rugby was immediately beneficial for Rudy. I played first team of Tony I remember grade 11. Uh, went to the academy week. I captained the academy side of SWD. Then when we went to the academy week and I got uh, Tommy Goodwin from the Lions spotted me there and obviously asked me if, if I would, must consider moving to Gauteng, going to Bastion High School and coming to, up to the Lions uh, junior ranks. As I luckily knew his dad from before it. Uh, uh, his dad myself was a, was a good rugby player. Uh, so I met him and we started to chat and I, I didn't notice, uh, so I asked him why is he actually and he told me, no, no, his son is playing. So I said, uh, but then there must definitely be something, if he's playing, there must be something that comes out of the genes. So we spotted Rudy uh, playing in that uh, 2006 under 18 academy team of SWD, he was also the captain. Uh, and he already at that stage showed signs of, of, of the potential. For me it was basically... Do I stay at a school that I love or do I, do I take a risk and go to a place where the growth in my future was so much brighter? So eventually my, my, my parents at the time decided for me that I have to take the, take the chance and move to, to Joburg to try and set up a, a career for me. But my mother and my father felt like I had to take the opportunity because opportunities like, you know, they only come once in a life. And I must be, I'm very lucky to say today that I haven't looked back yet. After a tough start in Johannesburg, Rudy knuckled down for the task ahead. I think the first two weeks was basically just talking to my old friends at Otunikwan and, and trying and, and wanted to go back, obviously, and, and my parents didn't want to have any of that. But at that stage, for the first two weeks, I, I wanted to go back very badly. It was the morning when he shook flight in Joba. And we still told him that morning, if you don't want to go, don't go. It's fine. Um, but there was one teacher who told him, OK, if you go, you go to a school that's not even in the ranks, or it's, it's, not, it's a no-name school. And he was so hurt by what that teacher told him. And he came to us, and he said, Daddy and Mommy, this is what the teacher told me. But I told him, if I left that school, the day I left this school, that school will be on the map. And, and, and he became, and then uh, we left this, then he told us, I'm going now. I'm sure, now I'm sure, I must go. And, uh, 
He became the SA school uh, scrum off and the captain and the Golden Lions captain at Bastion. And they beat one of the best schools that year, Monument. For me, it was a one, one single minded approach that I had at that stage. Uh, I had one opportunity and I know I, I, had, to, I had to took it. So. I got there at the end of grade 11, so I basically just played my trick at my first team year there. Yeah, obviously the, the, the guy that caught me there in the Lions believed that I was talented enough and I say the, the, my final year at Bastion was, was a memorable one on the rugby field. We were four guys over the back line that just played Kevin week that year. So we had a very talented back line at Bastion. Uh, I think our motto still then was, as soon as we get the ball, just keep it at the back. The move to the high felt paid off as Page was selected to captain the South African schools team after leading the Lions at the Craven Week. Difficult Craven Week for us as a, as a Golden Lions team, uh, playing down in wet and in Stellenbosch. But having said that, under those circumstances, he, he drove the team. He, he's made sure the team played in the right areas. You could see the players actually enjoyed it, although it was difficult circumstances, but you could see his influence on the whole team in terms of, of, of getting groups of players from, from different schools in Johannesburg to gel together as a team. Uh, you could see that leadership still still very present. We were on a flight back with the Lions Craving side and my dad phoned me and he's like, uh, God is good. That's his first word, God is good. And I'm like, yeah, dad, like, uh, tough Craven week, we didn't make the Craven week final game. So obviously then as a schoolboy you're thinking, ah, oh, they're probably selecting the side based on that final game. Uh, and then it popped up, uh, my coach came to show me that he got the email and stuff saying that I'm SA Schools captain. It's a great honour for me and a privilege to be uh, in the SA Schools team. It's every boy who play at the Craven Week, every, everyone wants to be in this team. For me it was just very important to make sure that everybody, everybody know that just you've achieved something and that you should enjoy that those two weeks that we spent together with each other. And for me, it's, it's always been about the team first. It's always been about serving the team and the rest will always follow. We put the team first and everything is so much easier. I think I'm, I'm very fortunate that my personality asked me in that fact that I get guys to, to follow me a bit quicker than a lot of other guys will, I think. Like to interact with everybody, it doesn't matter what culture, what race you are, what personality you have. I'm, I think I've got time for everybody. I think that's what made my, my transition, transition in, in that final year of my school year so important and easier. With captain of the SA Schools team on his CV, the future was unquestionably bright for Rudy Page. But there were trials and tribulations still facing the man from Heidelberg on his way to finally donning the green and gold. Welcome back to our look at the career of Springbok scrum half Rudy Page. After captaining the SA Schools team, a career as a professional rugby player beckoned. Gauteng Lions development manager Timmy Goodwin provided Rudy with guidance. Our relationship was, was, was really built on mutual respect, uh, trust, uh, because he's very reliable, uh, and just the mere fact that he's, he's willing to learn and he was open to learning. Uh, he will use any, every single opportunity that's there for him to learn, he'll, he'll make sure he will grasp it. Uh, and, and, and having said that, he's just his pure, pure determination. Uh, I've, I can remember games in the Vorgum Cup against the Bulls, uh, where Jonathan McQuena was our number eight. Uh, they do not come around and said, but this is something special. This kid is special. Yeah, he was, he was basically my mentor, uh, my dad away from home. He was also my coach from under 19, under 21, my Vorgum Cup. Coach, uh, I think he taught me pretty much the most about rugby from a junior perspective, from s uh, taking space to off the field stuff. Rudy, uh, because he's, uh, he's, he's got drive, uh, quickly adapt uh, to, to professional rugby in the sense that he, he could take on uh, responsibilities. Uh, he wanted to know what which areas he need to address uh, and how we're going to go about it. So. He was always open to, to, to that sort of discussion. What does need to happen to, for him to improve and how are we going to go about making sure it does happen. He was already our captain in, in, uh, in our 119 team and showed that potential. Uh, as, I've, as I've said, uh, he wanted to know what, what, which areas must be improved, uh, when we're going to set the time aside to, to make sure it happens. So there was never a lack of drive. Uh, 
and being selected as a member of the SA120 team was just a, a, a big reward for August, who was highly committed. That was my first trip overseas, being in a big plane, going to going to international tournament and seeing what, what rugby has to offer. It was, I think, 20, 2009. Yeah, we went on to play in Japan. Our, obviously, it was my first international test of international rugby, so that was pretty much, up to that time, the best time of my life. Personally, for me, it was just, I want more of this. Whatever this has to offer, getting a bronze medal wasn't good enough. Uh, just competing against the best, no matter the shape of my body, no matter how big or small I was. For me, it was just going up against the best and, and giving it a full go. After making rapid strides, Paige suffered a setback the following year. Well, this is not a good moment for the Lions because they've lost their captain. That's a big, big blow for the Lions. He's their standout player, and that does not look like a good injury. I had a massive injury at the age of 21 where I tore my all three ligaments off, off the tendon and they had to reattach my, my hamstring back onto the tendon and I was out for a whole year. I had to start over with my hamstring, started to learn how to walk. I was in the swimming pool for about seven to eight weeks just starting to walk. The, I think the doctor told my coaches that I wouldn't be able to play again but obviously I didn't get that message but for me that was a, a particular tough time and a time that I had to get through. I remember him lying there and not sure when he's going to recover and how this process is going to go about. So I visited him a couple of times in hospital during that period, but you could see this is not going to keep him back. Uh, if he applies his mind and we do what's demanded for him in terms of recovery, he's going to come up uh, fine on the other side. He had to, to wait for six months uh, to recover and, and another few months uh, before he could play. Uh, at that time, he was really uh, playing good rugby before that. So after his, his, his injury, he had to start all over again from Varsity Cup. He had to start from scratch. It was a yell of a set bet. Well, he slipped two tackles, and that's a great try that for you, Jay. Having fallen down the pecking order at the Lions, a fresh start was required to revitalize Page's ambitions. The Lions told him that they're not sure they're going to give him an uh, extension on his contract. <laughs> so he was very disappointed, but uh, uh, we didn't know what or where we should go, what the future was. So coach, again, Coach Franz Lyrica phoned me up and asked me if there's an opportunity because Francois Ugart and Jano van Mark was at the box at that stage. So they had an opening for a scrum half for a scrum off position in the Curry Cup. And he said they believe I'm the right guy for the job. And it's a, it's a trial run for Curry Cup basically, and I can give it a full go. I've always had the attitude, I just need one opportunity, I just need one chance, I just, just need a break, and, and it's all up to me. For me, it was just getting my passing better, making sure I'm fit enough, making sure my body is at the right time. And mentally, once I get a five minutes or 10 minutes that for that 10 minutes or 5 minutes that I play the best rugby that I can play. So that, that has always been my focus points when I got to the Bulls. It's just, when you get an opportunity, just take it. The fact that, that for we, and I think also Francois played also for the Springboks, gave him sometimes the opportunity as the third or fourth scrum off to get a, his chance in the Curry Cup or the Vodacom. It was frustrating, but I think it was it was necessary at that time because he learned a lot from Frodi and from Francois. And he's, he's, he's that type of guy that he wants to learn every day. Yeah, it was, it was difficult actually, not to come where I came from a side where you basically, whatever you, whatever you see, you can play that way, whether it's a quick tap, whether it's a quick throw in. And then went to a Bulls side at the time. It was very structured, had a very exceptional kicking game, and which the structures was in place. So I quickly had to learn how to kick a box kick. I quickly had to learn how to play the bigger guys into space, and obviously pick the right uh, the right player at the time. So it, it was tough for me in the beginning, but thankful that I took that learning curve. Rudy's performances for the Blue Bulls in the 2014 Curry Cup earned him Springbok recognition. It was my first time in 2014. We played semi-final 
uh, in at Newlands. Um, we still lost, and obviously, when you lose a, a knockout like that, you were down in the dumps. And Coach Franz came to me and he just gave me a little sock in the soul. He's like, it's not the end of the world. There's better things to come for you. You just got called up to the box. So for me, it was pretty amazing at the time. Now, I think that the first call was to my dad. He's like, yes, dad. So all the tough times, yes, I get this, this bit of good news. So for me, it was just all the hard work and all the disappointment and everything. Being called up to the box, to the box makes everything a bit worthwhile. He was so excited. We were excited. <laughs> I, I immediately called my wife. I told you, oh, it's great news here. Because that was his dream. To play for the spring box. Ladies and gentlemen, your hands together for Scrum Half, Rudy Page. Page's work in the Springbok camp impressed the powers that be as he worked his way into Eineke Mayer's World Cup plans. Still up to now, I feel that that is pretty much the highlight of my rugby career. Being to a World Cup, being selected in a World Cup group is it's the biggest achievement I've made up till now. I still remember Coach, Coach Eineke calling me into the room and telling me uh, that you've made it, you've done like all your hard work is being acknowledged and you're going to be on the flight to London. So at the time, uh, I remember going out of town, a bit of an emotional guy, once I hear good news. So I called my dad to say, yes, daddy, I'm, I'm going to the big states. I'm going to compete against the best in the world. When he went in to see the coach, and then the coach who told him what, what the decision was, uh, um, he called me and I said, OK, boy, listen, relax. If you're not going, it's fine. It's fine. There will be another time. If you, if you are in the team, if you are in the team and selected to be there, it will be an honor. But please call me back. And when he called me 20 or 15 minutes later, and he said, Dad, and, and, and he cried. And then I knew that he is going to the World Cup. And he told me that the coach just told him that he's been chosen to play in the World Cup. It was, uh, we were so just grateful, thank the Lord. And first thing I told him is, go on your knees, boy, thank the Lord for making this possible for you. Because this was your dream. And then to cap it off, a debut against the USA. I still have still told uh, Mornay Stein, uh, did you also feel this nervous before your first game? I remember the night before I, I asked Doc for a sleeping tablet, took the sleeping tablet, was still awake. Uh, the day when I'm, I'm Ian Swartz told me, like, take off your tracksuit pants, you're going on. I struggled to get off my tracksuit pants, actually, before going onto the field. That's how nervous I was, but I must say, once I got onto the field, then it was just rugby, so... I think the worst was pretty much that four days leading up to the game from a nervous point of view. Another occasion to savor was his run on debut against the Wallabies at Loftus Fairsfeld. Coach told me the Sunday afternoon that you're going to get your opportunity this weekend and I'm going to give you a, go a full goal on, on the starting position. So for me, I think then, then all the, the right lights in your head goes off. You start obviously preparing yourself mentally, playing the game probably played the game probably 10 times in the week in my head. Uh, but yeah, for me, the focus points was just, one thing that makes us come up good is, is his basics and doing your basics very well. So the other things will always follow, that's extra. So for me, the focus points for that game was do your basics very well and do it as fast as you can. Springbok recognition for Paige, a long time coming after many years of hard work and a cross-country trek chasing the goal he most desired. Rudy journey in rugby was very difficult for him. He was always the smallest guy. And there was always a guy at his, at his, in his position uh, taller than he is. So he all, always got to be the second scrum half, the second scrum half. And he was never very happy about it. Thank the Lord, he gave me the, the wisdom. <laughs> Uh, and my wife, Joni, uh, the wisdom and the, the, the courage to, 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 to speak to him. 
to, to encourage him not to give up on his dream and to fight for what he wants to be. If he, wants, if he believes he's, he's going to be the best, then he must go through any obstacle in his life. He's got guts. He has the potential to play at the highest level. He's got a great heart. He's not afraid. Uh, uh, um, and that's a kind of, 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 of characteristics that, that keep him moving on and on and on. And he's never satisfied with, with, with his game or, or whatever. He wants to be the best. He gives everything. He gives 120%. I think uh, that was always been my focus point and always been my belief. So if you're sitting back there and you want to become a ball, Nothing can stop you. I know that the stat says it's only a certain amount of people that eventually become a bob, but why? if you make up your mind, you can be that, that percentage. So anything is possible, I think. It's, a, it's a, class, a cliche saying where a lot of people say the sky is the limit, but I think that that is so true. In, if, you, if you believe and you really want to get something, it is possible. Page's determination paving the way to the ultimate prize, the green and gold of the Springboks. From playing with friends on the streets of Heidelberg to representing South Africa on the biggest stage, the achievements of Rudy Page prove anything is possible, no matter your size or the challenges you face.